Yeah, what's the move, y'all out there? It's your boy, Pissy Pit Anki, Lamb Lamumba, aka Blow Lambo, from out the barrio, you hear me? If you're watching this video right now, before we get into it, I'd like you to do me a favor, you know what I mean? Go on and hit that on um, subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be the first to receive more material like this here. You know what I'm saying? If you like this video, hit that like. If you don't like it, hit the dislike. How you feel? You know what I mean? And you can also leave a comment. The good, the bad, the different. You know what I'm saying? And if you like this video here, you can go back and um, check out some of my other videos. And if you also like to um, help to see this channel grow, you can send a donation to my cash app at Lamumba16. That's L-A-M-U-M-B-A. 16 stanking motherfuckers. So check the move. What's been floating around the internet, they been saying Queso's dad, Abdul Robinson, to us Jacksonvillians who grew up in that era, under that era, or during that era, know him by his blue. The world know Queso, you know, his real name is Hakeem Robinson, his dad's real name is Abdul Robinson. But like I say, to the ones who grew up during his era, we know him as blue. Um, it used to be him and this other guy Blue and Smiley, those names was inseparable. You know, Blue, he from Flag Street. Back in the um, 90s, Flag Street was very respected and still respected now in the most infamous apartment complex in Jacksonville. No hood has more dead homie shirts than Flag Street. You know what I mean? But word on the street, folks say that, um, I guess he supposed to be snitching on both his sons, you know. So let's get into it, man. Before I get into that point, I'm going to give you a little history of the area. I'm from the neighborhood. I'm from a neighborhood that's either known as Durkeville or on the map, it may come up on the Midwest side of Durkeville. You can type in either or Midwest Midwest Side Neighborhood, Jacksonville, Florida map, or Durkinville, Jacksonville, Florida map, and you'll see. Me. We have a very big neighborhood. Um, now, my neighborhood is so big that it's broken up into like, it's 13 hoods all in one hood. And Flag Street is just a small portion of the neighborhood. Now, the neighborhood runs from the northwest corner a canal, the um, west side of Canal Street, uh, from Canal and Martin Luther King. Take Martin Luther King all the way down to I-95. That's the northeast corner. Take I-95 down to Kings Road and I-95. That's the southeast corner. And take Kings Road all the way back to Canal and Kings Road. That's the neighborhood. Like I say, and Flag Street is just a small portion of that neighborhood, you know, but back in the 90s, you know, it, you know how the streets say, I mean, you can't really say they ran it or this, that, and the third, but it definitely was a name out there in the 90s and definitely was feared. Blue and Smiley was a name that was ranging. Blue and Smiley is among the biggest drug dealers to ever come out the city, along with Jacob and Henry Mans, which is noted to be the biggest drug dealer out of the city. And I like to say, not not glorifying it, but all the big drug dealers come from out of our neighborhood. You know, but um, back, <clears throat> back in the 90s, he was very feared. The boys went down in the 90s, and uh, I remember one time we had a big fight in the neighborhood my section of the hood, which is known as Fairfax, because Fairfax is the main street that ran through the neighborhood. We had a big fight 
with my side versus the other side. And you know, and I remember right before we fought, smiley rolled through. You know, all the commotion going on, we, you know, mounting up on each other. We're like, hold on, hold on, blue coming through. I mean, not blue, smiley. You know, smiley. And that's, that's my only time ever seeing smiley. You know, these is guys who you always heard of and never seen. I always heard a blue name back then, but never seen them until I got a grown man. Cause my brother was in the game and he was fucking with him. You know, I got a chance to meet him up close and personal and talk to him. I even, um, you know, when my brother had his store and I was running my car wash at the store, I had um, washed his own um, daughter's car days before she got shot up. But anyway, like I say, you always heard of the name, but we never seen him. But we gave him. We gave Smiley that much respect to let him go through before the chaos started. And the only thing that stopped us from fighting, one of the big homies from, from my section, Big David, which, you know, all the big boys from my side know the big boys from their side. You know what I'm saying? But Big David came through and put an end to that. Fans forward, years later. Now, we not teenagers no more. We grown men, and they damn sure grown men. The fear that Blue and Smiley had in the 90s was gone. Now, Smiley was a stand-up guy. They got Smiley first, you know, and they stepped to Smiley with a deal like, we, you know, we'll cut your time if you flip on your homeboy. And even Blue said himself in the DVD about Jacksonville Boat, on, I think it's called both sides of the track, uh, both sides or whatever. But try to try to look that up. But he um, spoke on it about they tried to get Smiler a deal and Smiler for some reason I guess they let him talk to him before he made his decision. And he looked him in his eye and said, "Do you think I could do do that to you and your children?" Smiler went and rolled over on Bloom, so Smiley ended up doing more time than Bloom. From what I heard, Smiley got out. He living his best life. He doing good. Um, he's somewhere, you know, doing his thing and pretty much out the way. Blue, on the other hand, jumped back on these streets trying to live off that name in the 90s. And when he got out, he came home to a street war. You know, this one, Flag Street and Grand Park was going at it. And I don't know how true it is, I guess he, this is just a fault lord that I heard he got out and uh, I guess he tried to step to some guys from Grand Park like yeah, yeah, this, then a third. And the motherfucker told him, said boy, that time is past. It's new motherfuckers out here now. That shit don't mean shit to nobody no more. And he had the respect to check it at that time. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, Blue got out and trying to still live behind that name. Now at this point, Blue was probably in his late 40s. He's, I guess, fit to say now. You know what I'm saying? Trying to big dog shit. Now his children didn't grow up in the neighborhood. Evidently, they grew up on the west side. That's how they know Young and Ace them. And um, I guess he the one crunk up the record label. And uh, like I say, man, the city ain't know nothing about no ATK or no KTA. That shit is not no fact in Jacksonville. That's just some shit. The news, you know, saying when all this shit happened, you know, of course, it's a lot of killing in Jacksonville. So don't nobody know what all this killing is about. It just killing, you know what I'm saying? And then when Blue got shot, when all them boys got shot up, when his son, Boss Goon, got killed, everybody got wet up in the car, even him, you know, we're like, damn, who crazy enough to shoot Blue? You know what I'm saying? Because he still got a name and a reputation. We didn't know what the fuck was going on. And then, you know, like I say, the, the media blew up this KTA, ATK type shit. The only gangs that was real out there that got a name that you consider a straight up gang other than a hood gang is on um, Head First, Cut Circle, and on um, 103rd Street Head Bustles. But them bitches been got hit with the Rico Act. So that ain't even a name no more. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, 
Of course, all this shit going on, Fulio and Young and Ace, this, that, and the third. And before I go, I'm going to break down to you how Jacksonville is broken up. This is why you got killing on all sides, and it ain't just a neighborhood going against another neighborhood. Jacksonville is family oriented. If I'm a, somebody from where I'm from, and say I got cousins from over this way, my cousins come over here. So, of course, by them being in my neighborhood, they know people in my neighborhood, and we probably know went over in their neighborhood. So now, say if some shit pop off, you you can have, like in my day, you can have a hood, two hoods that didn't get along. Time pass on, people now got grown and moved on. Now, you may see them same two hoods rolling together because it could be somebody that's a somebody in that hood got family in that opposite hood who used to be our enemies. And now they got beef with somebody else, well, and she, I finna hit my cousin them up. Oh, yeah, yeah, they finna get their peoples involved, you know what I'm saying? So that's how you got, that's how it goes. So you be having like killing all over. It don't be like um, subjected to just one area because it's all about who you is and who down the round for you. Now, I would like to say, man, I hate to see Blue go out like that. Queso's dad, Hi Abdul Robson, I hate to see him go out like that. At this point, Smiley gonna go out a real street legend, along with Jacob and Henry Mans. But it's not looking good for Blue. You know what I'm saying? And um, people been saying that Blue was snitching, but I can't see no other reason other than now, whatever reason that he would have had a reason for snitching. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, it's kind of sad to see somebody who we respected. I done rapped about and everything. You know what I'm saying? It's no different from if I was from Queens, New York, and I'm rapping about Peppy Mason and Fat Cat. Those was our Peppy Masons and Fat Cats. Those was our Ray for Edmonds. They was that big like that back in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? So like I say, I came up under them. Them boys older than me. My big homeboys roll with them. You know what I'm saying? Queso them would be our little homeboys. Even though he didn't grow if he grew up in our neighborhood, he wouldn't have been nobody I knew. My little dudes would know them if he grew up in our neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? So that's the spell on that man, you know. They say he's snitching, he finna on tell on both his sons, have it go, but you know, it's kind of messed up when they that guilt about association, man. It, the, the way they tramp us, man, you know, who's to say he probably ain't know what was going on. Let's say they just call him, come pick me up, that's my daddy. He finna come pick him up. Now, all of a sudden, I'm wrapped in this murder shit. You know? I found myself in a similar situation years back, which I ain't gonna get into. Only thing I can say is that I was in a hood that I normally wouldn't be around, chilling with my homeboy at his sister house in the hood that he wouldn't normally be around. Some cats that we knew did some shit and came running through the cut and ended up running through up, running up on us. And we like, oh shit, we like, what the fuck? And then motherfuckers said, get down, get down. Motherfuckers said, oh shit, that's family. Y'all come here. And the thing about that, I knew one of them, but I slick knew the other one. My partner knew the other one, but slick knew the one I knew. And when I tell you, man, that whole hood was out. They had their little getaway guy to pick them up. But, man, at the end of the day, you might, shit, we, man, we had to help them boys because they got guns. You know what I'm saying? They didn't know we was going to run into them. I mean, they didn't know they was going to run into us. We didn't know they was going to, you know what I'm saying? And so, man, I got so scared because that whole hood was out looking for them. And they knew them boys couldn't have got what so far. So while they trying to wait till the closer clear to run to the getaway car, I said, nah, let me call my call somebody to come get us out of here because at this point, I done rode a bicycle around that motherfucker. I'm scared to motherfucking ride the bicycle home because they're looking like, man, them boys are ready to hurt anybody they don't recognize from around that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So, 
you know what I'm saying, which I'm, you know, the person who I call, you know, they just gonna get us up out of there. But man, here it is, without me knowing, with, I mean, I was on my last bill about to dap out because I got to work in the morning. And here come these boys come through the cut. Unexpected, you know what I'm saying? And if I probably would have attempted to ride that bicycle home, bro, I probably wouldn't have been here now. Hell, my people's who house we was at, they ended up having to move out of the house because people was coming to the house confronting them, knowing that them boys ain't got but so far. So they never questioned us what happened that night, you know what I'm saying? But they got the hell up out of there, you know what I'm saying, over some shit. None of us knew was finna even take place. I was on my last bill about to dap out and, and this here come this bullshit and now I'm I'm feeling like my life in danger because like they knew them boys ain't got butt so far and they knew they ran through this way you know what I'm saying so it just kind of crazy man cause say like if I was a white boy nerdy white boy none of this or just say a little rusty white boy doing bullshit and I got good parents, and I done done some bullshit, and I called my parents to come get me. They not knowing what the fuck going on. They not finna take them people to jail for um, this, that, and the third after the fact. Like they'll do one of us, you know. But he probably knew the scope, Blue probably knew the scope, he probably didn't. You know, but that's the situation he in, you know what I'm saying? His son them did some shit evidently that was caught on camera uh, on an off-duty JSO officer. Saw the whole thing go down and they called him because when they ran from the police, they car wrecked out. They had no, um, you know, held the lady hostage, you know what I'm saying? And um, they used her phone to call Blue. That's how he tied into this whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Now he probably could have knew what was about to go on. He probably didn't know. But all he knew is his people calling him saying, come get him. Now he in a, he wrapped up in a murder case. But it's blow an angel far from that. You know what I'm saying? But yo man, that's what it is. Blow Talk TV, Piss P. Ike, Land Lumumba. Stay fucking with the channel. Uh, stay dangerous. Make sure you hit that notification bell. That's on. Uh, hit that subscription, and on, uh, and leave a like in the comment, man. Stay fuck with the channel. Stay fuck with the movement. Stay dangerous. Uh, stay the fuck out the way. Funky bitches.